Welcome back to another episode of the Behind the Counter Show. And we are here, well, it feels like as always these days with our pharmacist and my father, John Bellidi. And I don't really know what we're going to talk about today. What do you want to talk about? Anything new going on in the uh, world of healthcare these days? Well, you know, um, there's there's a lot. Uh, still, people are struggling with long COVID. Um, long COVID. Long COVID. Yeah. Does that so, mean like you must be this tall to ride this COVID kind of thing, or what? what nah, is it's a, yeah. Well, let's, it's, I wish it were something funny or something like that. But unfortunately, a lot of people are really suffering from uh, re residual symptoms from. Uh, suffering from uh, the COVID uh, sure. virus, and you know, you end up with symptoms. Sometimes it's just you know musculoskeletal uh, problems. Uh, most commonly, I think we see fatigue as a as a common uh, issue. Uh, some people have a, a breathing issues, and then occasionally too, we have people with you know s some degree of cognitive uh, you know uh, impairment. You know, or cognitive function is diminished in some capacity. So uh, okay. with wow. those type of things, you know, people really can struggle. And uh, how long it, does that linger on? Well, I mean, it's it's indefinite. People have been had oh, the really? virus, and they've been you know uh, you know COVID negative, uh, and and still having these symptoms. And this is they could be going on for months, years. Oh, geez, so, so that's it's, crazy. It's, yeah, but you said a lot of people or some people. How right. many exactly would that be? Well, the, the estimates are um, north of 10 million people. Oh, wow. North of 10 million people. And, and it affects a lot of children, too. So, children, really? Yeah, so, and then, that's, you know, you have the issues with the breathing. And, uh, sure. you know, uh, uh, so those pulmonary issues are frightening, too, because, you know, breathing. Wow, I did not realize this was an issue. Yeah, so. so what's being done about it? Is there anything? Well, you know, I came across uh, something because uh, a patient had come in and uh, was asking me questions about how, how, you know, what they could do. And, you know, I was trying to research and see if uh, anything new had come up. And there was a, an article on PubMed that was published uh, in March of 2024. So it's relatively oh, very recent. New. Okay. So it's it's promising. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's a study, you know, it's, it's, it's a, certainly, uh, you know, uh, not an exhaustive study by any means, but it seems to show that... Uh, some positive uh, feedback uh, that seems to suggest that low dose naltrexone, huh. LDN, uh, low dose naltrexone, it's a compounded medication, seems to have some positive effects to treat these pe people with these symptoms. So, what can you go into more detail on the trial? What exactly was done in the trial? Okay, so um, it was interesting. Uh, it was done at, the, at a VA hospital in Miami. Um, okay. And keep in mind, uh, just for uh, clarification here, this was a retrospective study, not a clinical study. So what does that mean? It means you're, you're looking at all your patients in the hospital that had COVID that are on a, a variety of medicines, and you're going back and saying, well, how are you feeling? Sure. You know? uh, and it's not, it's not the most scientific way, and there's no control group. So um, you're, 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 some of these symptoms people say, and they're feeling better, uh, yeah. They may have felt better at some point anyway. We don't sure. know. So, okay. you know, Fair we enough. really don't know. So we need to make sure that, you know, we don't suggest to you that uh, this by any means is a, it, it's promising. And I think it's worth looking into more. Um, but again, it was a retrospective study. So they went to people and said, OK, well, you're on. They looked at four um, four treatment modalities. One was okay. the low dose naltrexone okay. or LDN. Then they also looked at uh, an antidepressant, uh, an older antidepressant that was originally patented in the, I believe, in the 60s called Elevil. Now it's just generic. It's called amitriptyline. Okay. Um, then they uh, looked at um, something called, uh, again, sim it's called patented as a drug called Cymbalta, uh, but is now a duloxetine. It's available generically. And then the last thing was, an, I thought, an interesting one, which was PT, physical therapy. I, oh, I've, okay. you know, as Makes somebody sense. who's uh, had different... Uh, uh, back issues and stuff. I strongly believe in PT, and I think that uh, has a part in uh, and could help with this type of thing too. So I thought it was an interesting, interesting. choice. And, and uh, getting away from medicines, I think the less medicines we all take, the better off we are. You know, your grandfather always said that, and, and I certainly did. believe it. You know, so um, yeah. So those, you did those those four uh, things. And again, before we go any further, uh, these uh, informational videos are not to you know we're not your physician and or your nurse practitioner or PA right we're not here to to diagnose or treat you we're just letting you know some information that's available out here and there's again no substitute for you sitting down with your practitioner uh, they have all your um, health records and are at the best position to evaluate you know what's your best course of action yeah, for definitely these things, always you know? advisable John is a pharmacist and I am a guy with a camera so you know yeah <laughs> but so 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 what they did was um, they, they went to people that were on LDN, amitriptyline, duloxetine, and, and the PT. Okay. And they asked, basically, it was kind of a, a you know, sort of a vague kind of thing, but they were asking them retrospectively, how are you feeling? 
And um, we can put up the, the, uh, the chart um, on this, but it was interesting because when they looked at this, um, and this is only, again, another, another issue, too, is a short-term, one to two months kind of thing. So okay. uh, they, they were looking at this saying, well, how are you doing on LDN? Well, 67% of the people said they felt better. So that was a pretty strong response. Um, how did that compare to the other drugs? But, yeah, that yeah, so, yeah, so 61%. Uh, so uh, uh, amitriptyline, sixty-one uh, percent of the people felt better. Forty-five uh, percent on PT, and then uh, I think uh, it was thirty-five percent on duloxetine. So, okay. so um, so LDN led the pack, quote unquote, right. so to speak. Right. So yeah, I mean, you're making some fair points about like, okay, is this really a controlled study? Is this really a valid study necessarily? But I think there's enough to warrants further exploration and figuring out, hey, maybe this is something that could actually help. Agreed. So, you know, and, and you know, it's, you're sitting down with your practitioner, you, uh, you may sit there and um, let's say you're, at, you're a poor sleeper, for example, uh, and also let's say you're suffering from maybe partly due because of the fact that you had this long COVID and you're not doing well, maybe you're, you know, slightly depressed. Uh, something like amitriptyline, anti, it's a mood, mood elevator, antidepressant. Mm. It also helps with sleep. Um, and it seems like it had some good response with um, uh, long COVID. So maybe the practitioner says, you know what, for you, um, because of your symptoms, maybe this is a better choice. So you're uh, talking about someone determining whether yeah, whether you go with L, you know, LDN, amitriptyline, LDN, 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 yeah, yeah, therapy anything, or yeah. whatever. Because yeah. it, 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 at the end of the day, they're they're there looking at your the, your the whole picture, your all your test results, and they're in right. the best position to see what works. But what I'm saying is Another that tool it, in the toolkit, possibly. exactly. And so yeah. you, you're you're going to look and say, I like LDN because I think it's an amazing um, medication, um, and it, it's just very promising for so many autoimmune diseases and stuff. And I think that, you know, we're seeing uh, just because of the way it works and how it decreases inflammation in your body, it's uh, worth to try, especially because it doesn't have the side effect profile that, for example, a drug like amitriptyline does. Oh, what would that? Well, I mean, there's things that, you know, you, there's uh, you know, GI uh, uh, issues, there's cardiac potential issues there. Um, On and amitriptyline. Amitriptyline, so okay. a lot of sedation. But again, if you're looking for sedation, sometimes that's okay. Sure, um, sure. You know, but um, again, it's, it's all an individualized thing. Um, and again, to be fair, the uh, the study and then the dose that they were doing in the study, the dose was less than 20 milligrams. Uh, so, uh, with amitriptyline, so uh, you know, side effects again are always usually dose dependent. So, you're probably not going to get those the stronger side effects of the amitriptyline that are, are reported because gotcha. they're on a lower dose. So, um, um, but I do think that you know, um, LDN because it is so safe, um, and and you're taking it again at you know a dose of somewhere between 0 0.5 to 4.5 milligrams. Um, you know, the side effect profile on that is, is virtually, uh, it's extremely safe, but well tolerated. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, so you're saying ultimately for something like long COVID, there's more information that's promising that shows LDN may be a good option for a provider to include in the toolkit for caring for a patient for a lot of things, but in this particular case, uh, long COVID. Are there any caveats to including LDN in said toolkit. So, so I would say yes. There are yes several that I would say with regard to this article. Um, you know, still very encouraging and positive. But you have to keep in mind there was no control group as I mentioned earlier, right? right? So that's a, that's a problem. This is a very uh, small sample size of patients. Um, so that's that's an issue too. I think you know. So we you know we need to see if we could do a research you know with with a larger group of sure, patients. You know, definitely. Um, you also have to keep in mind something like LDN has to be compounded. Um, okay. So you have to work with a compounding pharmacist and your physician has to be familiar with that. Um, sure. Uh, I would say, though, that it is relatively inexpensive, so that's not a challenge there, but um, that's that's an issue. Um, yeah, so mostly the, it's you know, just... Well, it's less that it's the price and more that it's not covered by insurance because it's compounded. Is that right. what you mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that yeah. could be it. And the other thing, too, is, and I, there probably, and I didn't notice it, but there's no adverse uh, events listed and again they're probably there uh or maybe not for some reason weren't included uh sure. or maybe not available yet but so it's hard to see you know with those four uh, different groups what maybe adverse of events if any but you generally there are some you want to you want to evaluate that and, and a larger um okay you know a, a larger yeah group. all fair points so if you're a patient listening to this at home and you possibly have or know someone who is experiencing symptoms of long covid right and you think oh maybe i've tried other stuff maybe i should talk to my doctor about ldn what's what's kind of the call to action here for for patients like that well the first thing my sincere hope uh first and foremost is that based on this encouraging uh 
article and this study. Uh, I hope that now this prompts uh, 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 researchers and scientists to start going into uh, designing some more uh, studies that are that do have control groups and that they look at this further, especially the LDN, sure. because I think um, I'd like to see it in larger patient sizes. Yeah, definitely. Know? Makes sense. So, I mean, there's that. And then... Um, what about an individual patient level? Call so, action? yeah, so since since, we, since your studies could take a long time and the results, you know, uh, just as long, uh, you know, the other option is, you know, to talk to your practitioner. Um, and you could even maybe print the abstract, for example. Um, it's difficult sometimes. You have to be careful of going to your practitioner because, you know, uh, you know, they're kind of directing your care uh, through feedback with you and sometimes with the pharmacist or other practitioners. So um, sometimes they may not be comfortable, uh, you know, be, you know, you come in with uh, a patient coming with, you say, I want to take this. But put it this way, if you've been suffering from long COVID and, and you know, you're going through those other symptoms we talked about, whether it's just fatigue and you just can't get going and, or you're having problems, respiratory problems, or maybe sure. having the cognitive issues and or musculoskeletal issues, yeah, I mean, if I were experiencing You'd that, having I would all this not and, want to wait for a study, right? <laughs> right, but and, and let's say you've exhausted all the other options, right? Yeah. Um, maybe, you know, you, you, you just have a candid conversation, say, you know, can we try this? And, you know, do you think this is a good option? You know, just as a, just as sitting down, having a discussion, do we, do, do we think this is appropriate? Because, again, here we're just giving you some generalized information. It's not any substitute for you talking to your practitioner one-on-one, -on -one, looking at the entire picture and making sure that it's the right fit for you. But maybe... Uh, if you've exhausted other possibilities, maybe it's a good thing to sit down and have a conversation with a physician, you know? Well, what if your physician just entirely isn't familiar with LDN at all, which probably is not uncommon, right? Like LDN sure. is still kind of, I mean, obviously naltrexone has been around, but LDN as a therapy itself is, you know, a little more new and more cutting edge, right? So if your provider hasn't heard of it at all, then what would you do? Well, so... Um, you know, one suggestion is uh, to, to talk to a compounding pharmacist. You know, uh, sure. at, we, we here at HB Pharmacy are always available to talk to physicians, discuss, uh, uh, you know, um, these these therapies and, and how, how they may go about it and how we compound it, how it's available, um, how a person can titrate out up to a correct dose, because that's an important thing to consider, too. So, um, yeah, but it's very exciting to have this uh, information out, and uh, it's preliminary without question, but, you know, I think it's uh, encouraging, and I think it certainly should be uh, something that is evaluated. Yeah, sounds great, John. Thanks a lot for uh, sure. running through all of that with us. And we have done a few other videos on LDN as well on our channel if you want to check out the general benefits, or John mentioned the titration. We do have some other content related to that. But as always, feel free to give us a call at 201-997-2010. We are located in North Arlington, New Jersey, and we are a compounding pharmacy. John's a compounding pharmacist, so that's why we're talking about some of this stuff. So, yeah, Great. do you have any we're other here. questions? Yeah, we always feel free to reach out. We're happy to talk to you. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. See you.